Good evening and welcome to the Football Foundation's Grass Pitch webinar, where we'll cover everything from how to access funding through to renovation work that you'll need to do to keep your pitches in the best possible condition as grassroots football starts up again. I'm Mark Lydiard. I'm a Facilities Project Manager at the FA and I'll be hosting this evening. Before I make the introductions uh, to the others on the screen, there are a few housekeeping rules I'd like to make you aware of. This evening's webinar will be recorded and by attending, you are giving your consent for the recording to take place. No attendees images uh, will be uh, can be seen on the, uh, on the screen other than the presenters and the question and answer panelists. Let's move on and make a few introductions. I'm joined this evening by John Paul Constantine, who is the head of delivery at the Football Foundation. Um, and I'm also joined by Chris Smith, who is the program manager at the Football Foundation and the program lead for the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund. And finally, Tom Rowley, who is the key account manager for football at the Grounds Management Association, who we all work closely with. Uh, John Paul will take us through the main presentation this evening before we head into a question and answer session with Chris and, with Chris and Tom. Before we, before we start the presentation, we're really keen to gather your feedback uh, and questions so please feel free to use the chat function and type in your questions and I'll do my best as the host to pose those questions uh, to the panellists and to, to, to the presenters on the on the screen this evening. We will aim to answer all of your questions but if we cannot fit them in this evening uh, we will aim to distribute a further question and answer paper to you all so any do not do not be afraid to ask any uh, ask any questions via the chat we'll do our best uh, to, to answer them. I will now hand you over to John Paul, who will take you through the presentation. JP, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Are you uh, able to see everything okay? I am, yep, yeah, please proceed. Great stuff. Okay, um, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, as Mark said, my name's John Paul, or JP Constein, um, and I'm Head of Delivery at the Football Foundation. Um, so probably for about the next half an hour or so, uh, I'm just going to run you through um, some slides that we've got um, that are just going to give you a bit of an update on where we are with grass pitches um, and some funding that might be available for your club or your organisation to potentially uh, look to improve your pitches over the next 10 years. So why you're here. Um, hopefully, uh, the reason that you're here is that you've been directed either potentially through one of the county FAs, um, you've had an email from us, um, or you've, you've picked up through social media that potentially there might be some funding available to help improve your grass pitches if you meet our criteria. So the presentation that we're going to run through tonight will explain what the new funding is available for grass pitches, um, where this funding is coming from, uh, what you can use the funding for, what's required from both yourselves and your club, um, how we'll support you going forward, and then finally, how you can apply. And then at the end of the session, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just do a bit of a Q&A with Tom, Chris, and myself, and hopefully we can answer any questions that you may have. So the Football Foundation, um, hopefully most of you on the call uh, have heard of us before or know we are, um, but the Foundation is the Premier League FA and Government Charity. Um, and we were formed in 2000 and exist to improve grassroots football facilities across England. And um, since 2000, we've invested over 710 million of the partners funding um, and funded over 17,000 projects with a remit of looking to improve local football facilities um, to support people, regardless of their background, age or ability. Um, in recent times, we've started to take more of a um, uh, an interest, I suppose, in, in grass pitches and trying to invest more and more in grass pitches because it keeps coming up from clubs and from organisations that it's one of the greatest priorities that grassroots football faces in terms of wanting to improve uh, the playing services for their players. The state of grass pitches in England, um, I think uh, in the country that we live in, and I'm sure that you're all fully aware of it, is that the, the state of grass pitches in this country probably isn't where we'd like it to be. Um, there's been a decline in local authority funding um, in recent years, which is probably only going to get worse with the impact of COVID. 
uh, and that's led to a massive decline in the quality of grass pitches in England uh, in the last few years. Grassroots football clubs tell us through all the surveys that are done by the FA and other partners that grass pitches are their biggest issue um, in terms of being able to have somewhere of a good standard to play their games and train. On the last full season, um, which was 2018 and 19, um, the survey that the FA carried out did um, some research and only one in three grassroots pitches were rated as being of a good quality. Um, only one in eight clubs were satisfied with the quality of their grass pitches at their venue and over 150,000 matches in that 2018-19 season were postponed um, due to water logging um, or just generally the poor condition of the pitches. So we, we know from all the facts and all the feedback that we're getting um, from the grassroots game that it's something that we need to look to try and address. So um, what are we going to do about it? Well, it's something that the Premier League, the FA and government through ourselves are really keen to address. Um, in recent years, we've, we've worked with the GMA to introduce a new performance standard for monitoring pitch quality. And the aim of the foundation and its funding partners is that in the next 10 years, we want to have 20,000 good quality pitches across the country um, with 5,000 of those in place within the next three years. So Tom and, and Chris can um, answer some questions around the performance quality standard later. But essentially, the performance quality standard is, is a good quality grass pitch. Um, so well-maintained, well-cut, um, maintained on a regular basis and brought up to a good standard and should be able to withstand several fixtures a week um, and you know be of a good quality for, for you and your players to play on. So what we're looking to do, um, and we did start this last year with, with some funding that we introduced initially, is what we're looking to create is a 10-year maintenance plan um, for all the grass pitches in the country um, that join the programme in terms of how we're going to maintain them to improve them. The foundation can look to provide a six-year grant towards eligible pitches that meet our criteria. And essentially what we'd be looking to do is provide uh, additional funding of about 2,500 for a full size pitch to improve the amount of enhanced maintenance that's carried out on the site. So what we can't sit here and promise is that we'll come out and, and cut and market pitches because to take on that task would be just too much. But essentially what we can do is provide some additional grant funding for clubs to bring in either external contractors to carry out enhanced works or to provide you with the resources and materials for your clubs to do the, the type of work that you'd probably love to do, but potentially just don't have the resources or the finance to do. Uh, similarly, although um, on, a, on a slightly reduced scale, the funding is also available um, for nine side pitches and mini soccer pitches. So regardless of the quantity and quality of pitches on your site, potentially there might be some funding for you to access. That grant would be um, tapered down over six years. Um, so whilst we'd fully fund the, the works in the first two years, that would be reduced to a 67% grant in years three and four, and down to a 33% grant in years five and six, with the aim that at that point, you'll have good quality pitches, and you'll have the maintenance and expertise to continue maintaining those pitches um, through years seven to 10, which is the full length of the maintenance plan that we'd be looking for you to sign up to. The maintenance plans will be based on the recommendations um, from your pitch power assessment report. So some of you that are on the call tonight will have already used pitch power and um, you'll have, have done your assessments of your pitches already. Um, and those of you that haven't, um, we'll show you what pitch power is and how we're going to use it going forward. The pitches that we're looking to improve are pitches that are used by the grassroots community. Um, so pitches that are played on outside of the National League system. So if you've joined the call tonight and your first team plays in a pitch that's used at steps one to six of the National League system, unfortunately, that pitch wouldn't be eligible. Um, but if you play at either a regional feeder league level or there are other community grass pitches at your stadium site, they may, may well be eligible for funding as well. Um, touching on the performance quality standard, and I don't 
confess to be an expert at this, and I'm sure Tom will answer any questions that you've got. But this is the performance quality standard that the GMA um, have created to create a new standard for grass pitches. And we're looking to get to 20,000 pitches of a good standard. Um, that standard, as you can see on the screen, uh, the pitch would meet the standard desired for community football. Um, the vast majority of the pitches across the country uh, probably sit within that basic or poor ranking. So we're just trying to drive up the quality of pitches nationally. Um, and obviously, ideally for us, we'd like to get as many pitches to that advanced standard, um, which is considered a, a very good standard for community football. So um, what support can you receive? So the grant will pay for a pitch maintenance contractor potentially to come in and help you improve your grass pitches. As I said, it'll be um, based on a 10 year maintenance plan, which has been determined by the GMA within pitch power through the assessment report. We provide a 67% grant across the first six years of the maintenance plan. And the type of work that we're expecting to see the money used towards would be things such as slitting, fertilizing, selective herbicide, scarification, aeration, or overseeding. If you want to do it yourself, then potentially the funding can be used um, to avoid buying the purchase of materials. So, you know, using the money to buy things such as grass seed or fertilizer. And um, the only thing we'd ask is that where you're carrying out some of that work yourself, that you must have qualified personnel to carry out that works, um, which is the GMA level one uh, or equivalent standard. The regional picture advisor, uh, in those instances where you are looking at purchasing materials, um, will recommend the appropriate quantities and product types required um, so that the club are, are using the right type of materials for the pitches that they're looking to improve. So in terms of, of being eligible, um, there are a few things that obviously you need to uh, bear in mind. We've already touched on the fact that this funding isn't available for steps one to six of the national league system. So it has to be grassroots community football. Um, but the main criteria is that you must have a pitch power assessment report. And as I said, I know that some of you on the call will already have one of those. Um, and those of you that haven't, we're going to run through um, what pitch power is and what you need to do to complete an assessment. Um, the second biggest um, piece of criteria is that you have to have permission to do the works. So we are conscious that a lot of clubs will play on sites where um, they're local authority sites or they don't maintain the pitches themselves. Um, you must either own the pitches and be the freeholder. You must have a lease for the site and have that permission um, to carry out the works. Uh, a license may be sufficient or you must have the written permission of the landowner to carry out the works. So if you are playing on council pitches, for example, and um, you don't maintain the pitches, we can't give you a grant to go on without the permission of the local authority to carry out that work. And um, that would be a discussion you'd need to have with a landowner. Um, and we have got some pro formers that you can use to try and secure that permission to allow you to do that work. In addition to the grass pitch maintenance fund, um, we also can provide grants for machinery. Um, again, in your pitch power report, um, we'll be asking you information around what machinery you already have, um, and you can get recommendations within the pitch power report from the regional pitch advisor around what machinery and equipment requirements the club may have to try and bring the pitches up to a good standard. Um, the machinery that you purchase doesn't always have to be brand new. We can consider second-hand machinery where warranties are in place. Um, and we can also provide things such as storage containers for you to store your machinery and your materials as long as uh, all the machinery that you purchase is insured and secured safely uh, within the container um, to make sure that it doesn't go missing uh, if someone was to um, come along and try and take it. Uh, the grants for maintenance machinery and storage containers uh, are available through our small grant scheme. Uh, again, you would need the pitch power report in order to, to use it, um, but potentially we could look at grants of up to 75% um, for that maintenance machinery. A 
before we launched the fund, uh, we have done a number of pilots um, and we, we look to see what the impact would be uh, of investing a little additional investment into sites. Um, so if you were to go onto our YouTube channel, um, you'll be able to find a, a video about West Kirby United, which is up in Cheshire. Um, they're a big chart standard club uh, with 96 teams that play across 11 pitches that are run by the local authority and um, schools and are also maintained by the club. Um, on average, we uh, invested about £1,800 per pitch and the number of postponed matches reduced from 24% in the 2017-18 season down to 4% in the 18-19 season. Um, and if you have a look at the video that's on our YouTube channel, you'll see a real difference in terms of uh, the quality of the pitches, the amount of grass coverage, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's made a real difference. And the pilot that we did do with West Kirby was one of the reasons that we uh, considered making this funding more widely available to clubs and organisations across the country. So um, this would be a partnership between ourselves and the club. Um, we would help to identify what work you need to do to improve your pitches. Um, we'll provide tools such as pitch power to help you um, monitor and manage the process. Um, and we'll also give you 100% funding for the first two years of the program to try and give your, your project a kickstart. Um, there isn't any financial commitment um, for this program for the first two years from clubs and organisations. But what we do ask for in return is that the club's responsible for providing pitch assessments to us. Um, so twice a year, we'll be asking you to use pitch power um, to take uh, measurements and readings of your pitch. That all gets fed back to us and the GMA and we can continue to monitor and track your pitches and continue to offer advice in terms of what you need to do to get the pitches up to the best possible standard. What we would also be looking at is beyond year six when the funding ends is that the club continues to work to that maintenance plan and continues to look to keep those pitches at a good standard. What we don't want to do is fund the pitches for six years and then they fall into disrepair from year seven. Um, we're looking for that long-term commitment from the clubs to try and keep their pitches as good as possible. So in terms of pitch power, um, so this is, is the app that we've, we've talked about. Um, and if you've got any specific questions regarding this, then we can pick them up um, at the Q&A at the end. But essentially, pitch power is an app which allows you to input pitch information yourself. Um, so historically, we used to do uh, pitch inspections, we used to get um, PIP reports carried out by the RPAs, but it was quite time intensive. So it, would, you know, it took time for the, for the guys to come out to your site, to visit the site, write up the reports, and then often a lot of the reports weren't actioned upon. Um, what we've tried to do now is allow clubs to carry out the assessments in their own time, um, that they can do it themselves. And what it does, it significantly reduces the time it takes to receive the report compared to how long it used to take when we used to do site visits. It provides ongoing advice on how to improve your pitch and it works using a combination of photographs um, and information that the club provide. Um, so essentially you would take your, your smartphone, your iPhone out to your site, you take a, a series of measurements, um, provide some information around the various conditions around the pitch. Um, and then you'd submit that into the foundation in the GMA where they would review the information submitted. The app's free to use. Um, there's a user guide and instructional videos on our website. Um, and essentially, if you want to receive funding for us for grass pitches going forward, then pitch power is essential for you to use because it's our gateway to essentially open up funding uh, for clubs going forward. There is a very short video, which is just going to run uh, in the background. There isn't any sound or, or music or anything like that. Um, but it just shows you a little bit about what the app looks like. Okay, so that's the app. And if you go onto the Football Foundation website, if you go onto our grass pitch section, 
and there's a web page there all about pitch power where you can read about it learn a little bit more and if you want to you can download it onto your phone or tablet what happens once it's submitted uh, to us is that within 21 days um, Tom and his team um, will provide a report back to you within three weeks of submitting your inspection. Um, they'll review the information, they'll assess the quality of the pitches and then provide you with a series of practical recommendations on how you can improve the quality of your pitches. Um, it's quite a detailed report. It goes into uh, information on a pitch by pitch level um, using the measurements and information you provided. Um, and we can, you know, it's not just a generic uh, improvement report across the whole site it will give specific recommendations for each individual pitch, depending on the information provided. In addition to pitch power, um, we've also got the Football Foundation Groundskeeping Community app, um, which is an app for groundskeepers. Um, and it's supported by, again, Tom and his team at the GMA. Um, it's another free platform that helps you to connect with other um, groundsmen, both in your area and across the country and provide some free expert advice um, in terms of what you need to do to look after your pitches. Um, there's been some real positive new stories that have come off the back of this where clubs have worked together before where they, they've never worked before, shared equipment, shared advice, shared guidance. Um, and that ongoing advice and education about pitch maintenance has proved really useful for, for all the members that have signed up. Um, Tom and his team have also added some specific guidance regarding the extension to the end of this football season. Conscious that um, whilst everyone's delighted that football is returning, uh, hopefully next week, um, it does potentially cause a few issues for, for groundsmen in terms of end of season renovations and the works that maybe that clubs would have carried out this summer. So Tom and his team have put some really helpful information on there um, and you can ask questions and, and pose questions if you've, if you've got anything that you would like an answer from from the GMA. Just on that uh, end of season renovation, and again, if you've got any questions around regarding this, you can pop a question into the chat function for Tom at the end. Um, but we are expecting, obviously, end of season renovations to be affected. Um, there'll be quite a lot of detail um, on the app regarding you know, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, um, what operations should be taking place and what you can do around fixtures and tournaments and festivals and all the other things that clubs will be doing this summer to try and help generate some income. Not many more slides to go. Um, and then I'll hand over or hand back to Mark, Tom and Chris. But in terms of what's next, um, this is essentially a, a 10 step guide, which will circulate uh, on the slides to you after this evening's presentation. But essentially to proceed with an application to the foundation, um, you'll need to do that pitch power assessment report. So if you haven't done it already, you'll need to download the app um, and carry out that assessment on your pitches. Um, we need to make sure that you are, have the permission to carry out the works. So either through holding the leasehold, the freehold, a license, or have the permission of the landowners. And once you've got all that in place and you meet all the other criteria, um, we'd ask you to go onto the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund section of our website, where along with your Pitch Power Assessment Report ID, um, you can complete the online application form. Um, the application form, we won't go through in detail tonight, but it's very simple. Um, it'll all be pre-populated with information from your Pitch Power Assessment Report. Um, I would probably say, if you were still doing it after 15 minutes, um, you've probably done something wrong. It's a, it's a really simple application form for you to complete. Um, we have got quite a healthy budget for, for this, but essentially this will be uh, first come, first served. We obviously don't know how many applications we're going to get in for this because um, this is an open access fund. So whilst I don't think there's a mad rush that you need to get an application to us in the next couple of weeks, um, we will have a, a budget that you know potentially will be used up um, over the next three to six months. Um, so you know we would ask that if you are looking to make an application, do it soon. Um, you'll get a decision from us um, in less than four weeks, uh, hopefully in less than two weeks for the smaller grants. And once you've received the money from us, 
then we'd ask you to go out and procure the works. So you'll have your recommendations from the GMA about the work that you should be looking to do. And we'd then ask you to go out and contact some local qualified approved contractors um, to tender for that work and get them on site for you to carry out the work. There'll be two assessments to be carried out during the year, as we've spoken about um, earlier on. So, you know, at, at two points during the season, which you'll be uh, given an update to, to carry out the assessments. And we'll ask you to carry out those two assessments using the Pitch Power app and submit the information to us. And at the end of each year, we'll ask you to evidence how you've spent the money. And if you've evidenced it, and if you've completed your two Pitch Power submissions, we'll then release the next year's funding. Um, as I said earlier, the first two years, we will fund the pitch works at 100%, um, and then years three and four, 67%, and years five and six, 33%. To apply, you just go onto our website. If you follow the Apply Now button at the top of our website, it'll take you onto this page. You just simply click uh, Apply for Football Foundation Funding. Click on the application form within the milestones. And then using the uh, short code on the front of your assessment report, if you enter that into the application form, um, that will pre-populate the vast majority of the application form for you. Um, you just select that you want to apply for Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund, enter that ID, and the vast majority of the application will be pre-populated for you to complete. And that is the end of the slide. Um, I haven't heard a peep from anyone for 25 minutes, so you may have all gone home and I've maybe been speaking to myself. Um, but I don't know if there's been any questions regarding any of the process or anything like that, but if there is, uh, happy to take questions regarding the slides. Um, but over to you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, JP, for taking us through that, that presentation. Um, do, do, do we want to kind of move through, move through to the Q&A? Yeah, OK, yeah. so we'll, we'll go through to the, the Q&A. I don't know, if, JP, if you're going to stay online as well. Number of questions going in, coming in through the chat this evening. Uh, and I noticed that Chris has been very busy answering the majority of the questions in terms of of, of what's been asked. There's a few which I've, I've kind of jotted down, which we probably want to go into a little bit more, more kind of detail. So um, all three of you on the on the panel, uh, welcome. Um, Chris, a couple of questions which came up, which you might, and, and JP might be able to, to answer. Um, the presentation mentioned that an agreement with the landowner is, is required if a club didn't have a 10 year lease or a license in place. And I know this question has come up before on, on previous forums. Where, where can clubs get advice and guidance and where can they get hold of this agreement to start yep. talking to their landowner or site owner? Great question. Um, we provide the agreement template to each county FA. So if you contact your local county FA, they should be able to, one, provide you with um, that agreement template and secondly, support you with what's required within it. Right. Okay. That's 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 good. So, um, and there was another question there, uh, Chris. Just following up on that was uh, around uh, somebody on the on the uh, on the chat asked, uh, how long does it take to negotiate with a local authority uh, if they've got a maintenance agreement? In terms of what get, getting that agreement in place? Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's a fairly straightforward template. Um, you obviously need the permission from the local authority to carry out the works and that's the crux of the agreement in terms of um, what those works are and getting the agreement from the local authority to carry out those works so um i probably can't give a direct answer in terms of exact time scales and um, because all discussions and negotiations take different times but in essence that's the the the, uh, the simple answer um you'll need to identify through the use of your pitch power assessment um, report recommendations, what maintenance is required, and then get the agreement um, from the uh, landowner uh, on that agreement. Okay, okay. And, and, and just for, for, for clarity there, Chris, uh, like another question has been posed about a club using a uh, school playing field. Um, can, the, can the club still make an application if, if they use school playing fields? Yeah, so they'll, 
Um, they will need the agreement signing um, by the, the school. Um, but yes, they can they can still um, apply for um, the funding. Okay, okay, that's great. And um, another, another question which has popped up on the chat and I've been busy scribbling down in terms of my notes. Um, quite a few uh, clubs have had previous uh, GMA kind of reports and they've also used pitch power and submitted the data. Do, do they need to submit it all again before they apply for the funding? No, if they've already used pitch power, fantastic. And they've got their pitch power assessment report and they meet the eligibility criteria, then they can go into the, uh, the Football Foundation application portal and start their application. Right, okay, okay. And, and, and just, just a couple of kind of short questions here, um, which questions asked. Um, how do clubs get access to pitch power? Yes, yeah, so it's on the Football Foundation website. So I think uh, I sent the link on the, the chat function um, to one of the, the, the questions. Um, and it's something that we'll provide to the, uh, the people who attend the webinar um, post this session. Right, okay, okay. This is, is probably a question for, for you, JP, in terms of, uh, just in terms of the partnership funding. You mentioned that, that, that it's a six year kind of agreement in terms of the funding and um, there's 100% uh, required uh, for the first two years, which will be provided by the foundation, and then 66 and 33% for years four, three and four, and years five and six. Um, yeah. will, will, clubs, will clubs be expected to make up the difference as, as the funding kind of drops off? Yes, I mean, we've seen clubs uh, do it in different ways. So we'll fund 100% for the first years, uh, first year and second year. Um, it, what that gives is the clubs a little bit of a chance to start generating some money, put some money aside. Um, in years three and four, where the clubs have got to fund that 33%, um, we'd expect that either to come from club funds or from fundraising or from an existing budget. And um, we have seen some clubs secure other grants um, to help top it up. Uh, in years five and six, obviously that gap stretches to, to 66%. Um, so there's a bit more for the club to find. Um, but over the six years, the you know the contribution of the club's thirty three percent. Okay, okay. And uh, Tom, moving on, I know we we talked to, uh, earlier about the uh, the renovation of, of pitches, and obviously we're everybody's looking forward to to kind of grassroots football starting back at, back again to to continue or, or to, to to progress over into the next next few months. Um, what what can be carried out if we're still playing on games on our pitches? Uh, due to the extension in, of the season into June. Cheers, Mark. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so obviously with the extension of the season, it does make the uh, traditional uh, end of season renovations a little bit tricky, as there's probably going to be quite a short turnaround, um, if any, I suppose, in some cases from the end of this season going into the next, uh, and then combined with the end of the season being bang in the middle of the summer when it's often uh, hot and dry and makes certain operations um, difficult. So um, flexibility will be the key. And, you know, there's quite a bit of detail on the groundskeepers hive, as, as JP mentioned. So those of you that are already on there, or if you're not on there, then I'd um, recommend you, you join up because there's, there's, there's uh, quite a bit of information on there. And it also gives you the opportunity to uh, to chat with others around um, what they're doing. But I suppose the um, <clears throat> The biggest challenge will probably be around um, seeding and overseeding. Because if you were to wait until the end of this season, it's likely to be um, too hot and dry for any seed to germinate and establish. So, um, so I suppose with that in mind, then potentially seeding from now, sort of late March and April, um, and or again in September time would give a much better chance for the seed to take and establish. Um, I mean, there's obviously a risk that um, the new seed might get kicked out during play. Um, so it's important that if you are seeding, that the um, application method is with either a drill seeder or a disc seeder and making sure that's working with working with your contractor that's um, set to the maximum depth, because what that will do is they'll essentially plant the seed in the ground and it'll just give it the maximum protection and hopefully be able to establish some routing so then um, when it does appear, it, it's got a better chance of, um, of being able to withstand sort of wear and tear. Uh, in some sort of, 
in goal mouths and areas that are particularly damaged, then you may need to consider um, turfing at the end of the season if you don't have the opportunity to to get a seed in the ground and for it to establish before uh, before the new season starts. And um, most other operations can be done. Uh, again, it's around it's a it's around being flexible. So fertilising, for example, can be continued as normal. Um, so applying a controlled release fertiliser uh, in the spring. Um, as is always the case with fertilising, it's the timing of application is key. There was lots of grassroots clubs don't have uh, access to irrigation. So um, trying to plan fertilising around um, to coincide with rainfall within one or two days of applying the fertiliser. And then also thinking around if you have got fixtures is, is you may want to think about leaving a few days between applying the feed and then any usage uh, on the pitches. Uh, we'd usually look to carry out some deep compaction operations. So deep spiking, again, that can be carried out as usual in the spring, soil conditions allowing. Um, usually summertime when the ground's hard and dry, it's, it's too hard for operations. You can't get the machinery in the ground. So Again, carry on as usual, sort of springtime with the decompaction operations, there's, there's no issues there. Uh, I think what else there is, I would probably advise against any sort of heavy mechanical scarification as that would need to be left until the end of the season and the, the short turnaround time between the seasons would, would leave little time for any recovery. What you can do is use a springtime rake or a chain harrow pulled on the back of a tractor, which will just sort of uh, rip out any uh, any bits of thatch and meadow grass, et cetera, without, um, without being too aggressive, basically. Um, what else we've got? So sort of sand dressing, if anybody's considering sand dressings, um, again, that can be carried out, but we just need to be careful about the amount of sand we're putting down probably wouldn't look to put any more than 20 or 30 tonnes down because when you're applying sand dressings on established turf, it's much harder to work into the surface. Sand dressing combi combined with deep spiking is great because you can work your sand dressings in down the holes and improve drainage, et cetera. But what we don't want is a beach, essentially. When you've got players still playing and still training, et cetera, then you know, we don't want to... We don't want sand everywhere. So just, yeah, so just be careful about how much you're putting on. You may want to put 20, 30 tonnes on now, another 20 tonnes on in, in September time. So again, it's about being flexible and, and splitting things up. Um, and, and then uh, what else have we missed? Uh, so yeah, weed killing, so anything selective herbicide wise. Again, that, that shouldn't be too affected. Um, usually should be carried, well, it should be carried out when the grass is actively growing. So spring and summer and should always be carried out by a qualified professional with the appropriate uh, equipment paperwork etc uh, the one thing with with applying selective herbicide is it's usually recommended to not cut the grass three days before or three days after application so that's obviously something to to think about and bear in mind if you've got fixtures that uh, particularly at the height of the growing season if you're not potentially going to be cutting your grass for for six days, um, then it won't be, it's not gonna be straightforward to just cut, coming in and cutting the grass and getting your games and get your training on. So that's just something to, so it, yeah, it's gonna require a bit more planning, being a little bit flexible, perhaps having some conversations with your, with your clubs and your teams and, and working out when those little gaps are to get on and, and do some work and, and, and again, working with your contractors uh, with that as well. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, Lids. Okay, that's, that's great. Talk. And, and what question if I can just bring you in again and ask you kind of questions is there's quite a few questions coming on with regards to what kind of grass seed do you use, et cetera, you know, in, in these times. Um, what, would you say that they're really good questions to pose in the groundskeepers community? Yeah, definitely. That sort of stuff. I think we've got over, I think we've got around 2,300 uh, people on the groundskeeping community. And it's a really active community. Lots of... Um, a mixture of people, lots of grassroots groundskeepers, regional pitch advisors on there. We've got some professionals on there, and it's like a, it's a really friendly, open place to have a conversation. There's there's no stupid questions. Um, people pose photographs um, of work they've been doing. Ask any question, and you'll you'll always get an answer. So yeah, for uh, yeah for those that aren't on it, then then yeah, get involved, and and um, yeah, it's well worth it. Yeah. Okay. That's that's great. 
Uh, Chris, if we can just move on to a, a question for yourself. Uh, clubs in the National League system want to see, as it was mentioned in the presentation, they, they can't apply. Uh, I know you've been answering some questions on the, the chat. Do you just want to clarify that for, for clubs, you know, for those clubs where they've got additional pitches? Yes, yeah, so the National League system, clubs can't apply for their stadia pitch. But if they have other pitches um, around their stadia, which are used by grassroots football clubs, then they could apply for those um, pitches, but their stadia pitch isn't um, eligible. Okay, okay. And, and, and probably a, a one for, for you, JP, on, on, on this is, uh, a clubs received the recommendation back on pitch power um, and they need to do some work on their pitches, but they also need to apply for equipment. Um, yes, so that's do fine. Any, is that one application or is that two? Uh, yeah, I think they can do it as one application now. Um, it was it's something we did. Chris is unmuted. So I'm like Chris jumping. Yes, yeah, sorry, because because what we've done is we've recently brought through pitch power data into the uh, grass pitch maintenance fund application, um, and we haven't as yet done that with machinery. So as it currently stands, it will be two separate applications, but we will be pulling through the uh, pitch power data automatically into the machinery um, application form probably sometime next month. Sorry, JP. That's fine. But yes, you can apply for both. It's, but yeah, it'll be two separate applications for the time being. Yeah, okay. And uh, just a, a, a question, uh, just going back to, to kind of reaffirm the use of pitch power. We know that a lot of clubs previously have had inspections by some of the regional pitch advisors from, from the GMA. Uh, Oh, am I right in thinking they can't use that report to make an application to the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund? They've Correct. got to go on and use pitch power? Correct. Um, everybody that applies for the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund will need to use pitch power before applying and get a pitch power assessment report ID to use within the application portal. And, and, and on pitch power, Chris, is it is it just a review of, 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 of the site? Or does it go down to every single pitch on the site if a club, you know, wants to to add them on and they're applying for funding for them? Yeah. So the the message behind pitch power, if you are looking to apply to the football foundation, is to use pitch power across all the pitches that you maintain on the site and that you want funding for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that we are pretty much there in terms of some of the questions. I'm just having a look through uh, in terms of any more questions. I think we've pretty much covered all of all of the questions. Um, should we just, just allow 30 seconds in case anybody else has got any final questions uh, they want to pose to the panel? There's a question just been um, raised a bit more clarity from um, Errol. Yeah. Um, so what I mean is that we have a club next to us with pitchers who I know are also looking at this fund. We were encouraged to work together to, um, i.e. say, purchase grass seed in bulk, share contractor services. Yep. So if, if you are um, working uh, or have close um, ties to your neighbouring site or neighbouring sites, um, it makes absolute sense to um, economies of scale um, um, get uh, grass seed materials, etc., um, uh, across those sites. What you will need to do is, so when you claim for your year two, is you will need to split out um, the the invoices and, and claim across the uh, individual site that you've applied that you've applied for. But certainly um, buying bulk across numerous sites and um, pulling these off together makes absolute sense. Okay, uh, and that's great. There's, there's a few more questions, Chris, which have just popped in. So if I can, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, you and, and the other panellists these questions. Uh, can local authorities apply? No, the, the applicant needs to be uh, the, the club league, um, et cetera. Um, the, uh, the agreement that uh, the County of A's have I've seen a question um, on the chat around um, county phase furlough staff. So we will look to provide that, uh, a copy of that in uh, the comms that are sent out after this webinar. The, the agreement 
um, will need to be between the club and the local authority, but it would be the club that would be applying for the pitches, not the local authority. Okay, okay. And um, is it is it a club a club here? Obviously, on the on the on the chat, has got more than one one site. Can they? Can is it one application per club, or can they make an application for each site they they use and maintain? Yeah, so it'll be each site. So you'll get an assessment, a pitch power assessment report for each site that you've used yeah. pitch power for, um, and a unique pitch power um, report ID. And so you, you'll use that unique um, ID in the application form. So it would be per um, site rather than per club. Right. Okay. Okay. Pretty much covered that. Uh, if, if a club does drainage works in between uh, receiving this this kind of funding over say a period of the the, the, the funding the next six years, um, can they can they kind of stagger that period if you know, I miss a year? Um, we'd need to look at each individual case by case. Um, it might be that if the club is planning drainage works in the short term. Um, because you've only got the year to spend your grant in, it might be better to get the uh, the drainage works done and then apply um, to the Football Foundation uh, once those works have been carried out. Um, it's probably worthwhile saying that um, this fund uh, is likely to be replicated in the future. So I, I certainly wouldn't want to um, suggest that any negotiations with local authorities over leases, licences or any works around drainage that needs to be carried out should be um, stopped or postponed uh, to access this funding. Um, certainly um, plan for the, the medium term because there are likely to be additional funds um, either exactly the same as this fund or very similar uh, in the future. Okay, okay. And one of the questions which come up, we know that, that some of our, our local county FAs have, have, have unfortunately had to furlough some of their staff at, at the moment. Um, if anybody's got a query, Chris, uh, did I see that you posted early on in the chat uh, uh, an inquiry uh, kind of email address? Yeah, so inquiries at uh, footballfoundation.org.uk. Um, 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 sorry, I've recently transferred from the FA to the foundation, so I'm still getting used to that. Um, yeah, if, if it, what we'll do is basically, if you get in touch via that email, um, we will uh, look at it on a case by case basis. Likewise, if anybody has any problems, I think um, somebody in the chat mentioned that their report ID wasn't pulling through or, or working. That's the email to um, to get in touch with with any um, unique situations or any problems, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll basically uh, look to answer those uh, as soon as possible. Okay, okay. We're, we're nearing the, the end in terms of that. We've got time for the last couple of questions, really. Um, if, if, if a grant is accepted for an 11 v 11 pitch, so they get uh, two and a half thousand pounds. Is that two and a half thousand pounds spread over six years, or is it two and a half thousand pounds for year one, year two, and then taken down to 66% and 33%? Yeah, so that, that's the funding that's in year one and year two, and then that will reduce um, that will reduce in years three and four, and then again in years five and six. But it is expected that the club um, or the applicant um, maintains that level of funding throughout the six-year programme. So the football fund. And, and obviously that funding, Chris, uh, is, is really rec what's recommended from, uh, you know, through, through pitch power from, from the the grass, uh, yeah, the grass regional, regional pitch advisors in terms of what they're recommending from when their pitch power assessments are submitted? Correct, yeah. So you'll see in the application form that it will mention numerous times that the, the funding is to be used against the recommendations that have been made by the regional pitch advisor in your pitch power assessment report. Um, and they, 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 sorry, they will be the eligible items that you could, can claim against in a year's time. Okay, okay. And, and then the last last question here um, is, can you explain uh, the sustained part of the fund? Yep. So the sustained part of the funding is if you're in your pitch power assessment report, your pitches have come back as good or better, there is still an amount of funding which you could be um, 
eligible for and that's the sustained funding and the reason why we've called it sustained funding is because we want to support um, clubs leagues applicants that have done a good job in getting their pitches up to a good standard we want to help them maintain them and sustain them at that good standard okay okay i think that brings uh all of the questions to a, a close as i say we'll, we'll go back we'll go back over um, and just look at the questions to make sure that that we've picked up any we, we haven't answered um, that formally brings the the webinar to a close uh, so I, i'd like to thank uh, john paul tom and chris for providing the answers some of the questions posed tonight. I would like to thank all of you for asking some excellent questions uh, because it, when we launch new funding, it is difficult sometimes to, to, get, to get your head around in, in terms of that. The support is there by your county FAs and, and colleagues at, at the Football Foundation uh, to, to support you. Uh, just before I, I kind of close, uh, with the turn of, of Football Fast Approaching, the Football Foundation have launched a Game On campaign um, with three different funds to get you ready for the big kickoff. The Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund is one of those funds which we've gone through in detail tonight. And as part of the Game On campaign, you may be eligible to apply for the Return to Football Fund uh, or a small grant to support your club. More information can be found at the Football Foundation's website and will be shared with you after this webinar. Uh, you will also receive a follow-up from the Foundation which will include the following. Uh, as I mentioned just earlier, a Q&A paper for the questions you've posed to make sure we, we've, we've clearly answered them all. A recording of this evening's uh, webinar, uh, the presentation slides for this evening, uh, and more links uh, to information of how you can get involved in our grass pitch revolution. Lastly, can I thank you for your attendance? Hopefully you found the webinar beneficial, and I look forward uh, to you submitting your applications for funding and accessing the online groundskeepers community to get tips and advice uh, from other volunteers, groundskeepers and professionals in the industry. If we all work together, we will achieve far greater things in terms of the quality of pitches and the enjoyment for all who plays the game. On behalf of us all tonight, thank you very much. <laughs>